Be'ezat Hashem, Na'aseh, V'Natzliach. I want to welcome you to another session of our Rosh Chodesh class at the Yehudit Ben Shabbat residence. This month's class on Rosh Chodesh Sivan is a very, very special one. I hope you brought your seat belts. Buckle up so we don't have to scrape you off the top of the ceiling at the end of the night. You will never see yourself the same way again after this class. This is a class that I'm very excited to give over. There's two concepts that in the past few months have come into our learning in our Parshat Shavua class, in our Tanya class. And they're so mind-blowing and they're so life-changing that there's nothing better that you could do on Rosh Chodesh, on the week of Shavuot, is to take these two life-changing lessons, put them together, tie them up in a, in a bird's eye view of the Jewish experience, and you'll get primed for Shavuot, you'll get primed for Matan Torah like no other year before. That's how I feel personally. Hopefully by the end of the class you'll, you'll share that uh, sentiment as well. Before we get started, I'd like to give some honorable mentions and dedications to the following people. Be'ezat Hashem, that this class will be to the Ilun Yishmat of Avraham Yoshua ben Sultana, Simon ben Alia, Mazal bat Luna, Meir ben Rebecca, and Sultana bat Frecha. Also, that this class will be to the Brecha v'Hatzlacha of our gracious host, Yudit ben Shabbat, Amen. who does Amen. a phenomenal Amen. job. Amen. She's Amen. become pro level already at this point, <laughs> at hosting, at the food, the layout. Uh, Baruch Hashem, every month we have a lot of regulars, a lot of new people. Hashem, Bezat Hashem. May you always be on the side of giving, always Amen. be on the side of learning, Amen. teaching. Amen. And Hashem, Bezat and your children, Noam Elimelech, Asher Meir. And there's that Hashem, they grow up in the way of the Torah. They go higher and higher. Amen. They, they grow up to be Gdole Ador. Amen. Give you a lot of nachat from the children. And as well as Zivug Hagun, Mishosh Nishmatam, to Shammai Ben Avraham, and his Zivug. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Uh, I just want to also highlight a very special individual who uh, has uh, left school today in order to be here with us. It's uh, Daniel Ben Tamar. It's his birthday today. Mazal tov, mazal tov, mazal tov. Thank you. His mother sends her regards to you as well, by the way. Okay. Let's get started. Allow me to reintroduce you to you. We are so focused on our day-to-day -day lives. We are so busy being busy, that the Yetzirah has us focus on everything that's right in front of our nose. Dare I say, even our phones. But in order to really, really understand what life is about, what your life is about, what your Jewish life is about, we have to take a wide angle look tonight where you have to zoom out, zoom out, not just from the, 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 your phone screen, but to zoom out to your family life, to your community life, to your entire life, and to the entire history from the beginning of time up until today in order to understand who you are and what's your purpose. This is a Rosh Chodesh class. Rosh Chodesh is always another opportunity for a spiritual upgrade. We always check ourselves in every single Rosh Chodesh at the beginning, mamash, as it starts to understand what spiritual abundance is available for me on this month. What menu do I have available to me on this month that Hashem allows me to not only draw the spiritual abundance, but also to acquire the life tools that I need in order to win this month, in order to win my life. As we know, spiritual prime times, they loop back every year. And it's up to us to get plugged in and to draw the spiritual abundance into our personal life and collective one as well. You, owe, you, you, you First lesson of tonight, you're not a lone wolf. It's not, you're not one of one. In Tafshin Pei Dalet, you're one of 14 million. 
Know that you are one of many. We create one big body called Am Yisrael, and you are one of 14 million. The Jewish experience is a collective experience, as well as an individual. Furthermore, every month presents an opportunity for spiritual growth, both physical and spiritual. So when we plug ourselves into these classes to acquire the monthly life tools for our toolbox of life, we'd like to know, what are we going to learn tonight? The month of Sivan. Well, the month of Sivan is famously known to host the famous holiday of Shavuot, Matan Torah, the day that we were given, the day that we were given the Torah. The day that God chose us to be His nation. And we accepted. And we accepted God as our, as, our, as, our, uh, as our King, as our Father. And we accepted the Torah as our code of ethics. That from this point on, this is how we carry ourselves. This is how we carry our, how we move forward in our lives. It's our life manual. We're governed by God and His morals, His ethics. However, tonight, we're going to zoom out and get a bird's eye view of the Jewish experience of how we got to that moment. To be the chosen people. To be God's child. And all this will be done through the month of Sivan, through the holiday of Shavuot. And I guarantee you, you will never see your life the same way again. Let's start with Matan Torah. How did we get there? How did we get to be the chosen nation? How did we get to be called God's child? Am Segula, Beni Bechori Israel, Bani Matem Lamakom, Goy Kadosh. These are all titles that were given to us. These are incredible, incredible achievements. That the creator of the world, out of all his creations, and then all the people on this planet, he says, you are my favorite. You are the chosen one. You are Beni Bechori, my son. What did we exactly do to deserve this title? To deserve this honor? To have this position in humankind and this role as a nation? And furthermore, I'd like to ask, how close are we today to that Jew that received the Torah at the bottom of that mountain, in the bottom of Har Sinai? Because that Jew was special. That Jew deserved it. That's the Jew that Hashem said, you're the one that gets the Torah today. How close are we to that guy? How do I compare to the original Jew today? So in order to get a fuller understanding, we need to go back, way back, way back to the beginning of creation to really understand. And this is, this is really what I wanted you guys to understand, that we're going to have to go back to the beginning in order to understand how we got to this point. This is the type of lesson that connects the dots. This is the type of lesson that puts everything in focus. This is the type of lesson if you had some things that were blurry, some things that were vague, everything will be in sharp focus and we'll be able to connect from the beginning of time till Matan Torah, till today. The Zohar says that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, Kudusha Baruch Hu istakel ba'oraita u'bara alma. When, it, when God wanted to create this world, before it was this big ball suspended in the middle of space, Hashem looked at the book. He looked at a scroll. He looked at the Torah. And from that Torah, that was the blueprint to this world. I always had a big question. Some people that don't want the... the, 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 the the work that comes with the religion. It's not work really, it's called a service. When you're outside of the religion, it seems heavy, it seems like it's confining, it seems like it's, uh, you know, that you're, you're jailed into all these do's and don'ts, but in reality, once you're in the religion, 
once you live a Torah life, you see it's the most beautiful set of rules that lets you not only enjoy life, but win life and experience life, have a proper Jewish experience in this world. I highly recommend having a Jewish experience for your Jewish neshama while you're in this world. It's life-changing. But the people that don't want to experience that, and they just want to have a physical experience, of course, we are spiritual beings on a physical journey at the moment. So for the people that don't want the, physical, the spiritual experience, they just want a physical experience in the physical world, so they don't want everything that comes with it. So they always come up with the big questions. Why did God create the world for anyways? Right? Why did Hashem create the world anyways? Well, if you open up Bereshit, Bara, Elohim, Et HaShamayim, Et HaAretz, go to Rashi. Rashi right there on the bottom tells you what God created the world. Bereshit, Bara, Elohim, Et HaShamayim, Et HaAretz, Rashi says, Bishvil HaTorah, Shenikret Reshit Darko, U Bishvil Yisrael, Shenikreu Reshit Tvuato. God, created the world for the Torah, which is Reshit Darko, which is the, 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 the main, the initial way of uh, showing His way in the world. And the second reason why God created the world is for Reshit Tevuato, which is the Jewish people, His first crop. Who is the first crop? The Jewish people. So if you ever wonder why there's a big wall suspended in the middle of space called planet Earth, why is it in the, part of our reality? Because God created it for the Torah and His way and for the Jewish people to follow it. That's why the world got created. Furthermore, God created the world for the Torah because the Torah exemplifies God's ways in this world. And he created the world for the Jewish people, his first crop, because they're the ones that are going to follow the ways of God. As a matter of fact, it's brought, it's brought back in Tikkuni Zohar. It says, Kudush HaBerichu, Yisrael Veoraita Hadu. Add this to your understanding. I want you to press record on every single thing that we're learning tonight. God, the Torah, and the Jewish people are one. You might have to listen to this lesson maybe twice or three times before all these concepts sink in. It's going to be a lot of information for one night. I'm telling you right now. Whatever you can grasp, now, nah, grasp. But eventually you want to press replay on all this. This will connect all the dots of understanding. God created the world for the, Jew, for the Torah and for the Jewish people. And the J Jewish people, the Torah and God are one. Furthermore... As we continue our path of creation, as we all know from first grade that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world in six days, and the last creation on the sixth day was man, called Adam. So why would man, human, be called Adam? Could have called him Steve. Could have called him Jared. Why is he called Adam? And not only that, what's the role of man in this world? Okay, you created a man. What's his role? What's the purpose of man on this world? What's the purpose of Adam in this olam? So Adam is called Adam because he comes from the Adama. He comes from the ground, from the earth. Why? Because the essence of the earth is to grow. You put a seed, it turns into a plant, the plant turns into a tree. The tree starts to give fruit. And that's the essence of earth. You put something in it and it grows. So just like the essence of the ground is to make things grow, similarly man is made from the ground, made from earth, because his attribute is to grow. God made us from the ingredient of growth because our essence as people were meant to grow. Furthermore, the famous Pasuk that God created man in his image, in his likeness. So we see that now we are very close to 
what the creator is like. Of course, let's just put the disclaimer on there. God doesn't have a face or an arm or a body or a shape. He doesn't look like a human. But the attributes of God are embedded in man. His mercy, his kindness, etc., etc. In his image and his likeness. Pirkei Avot, on the third, uh, in the third chapter of Pirkei Avot, on the 14th Mishnah, it says, Haviv Adam shenivra b'tselem. Chiba yetera nodat lo shenivra b'tselem. Ki b'tselem elokim asa et ha'adam. It says, since the Pasuk says, Ki b'tselem elokim asa et ha'adam, that, uh, that a, a man was created in the likeness, in the image of God, Haviv Adam, because of that he's special, he's unique, he's liked, he's favored, he's fancied, he's adored, he's the chosen one. Haviv Adam Shenivra Betzelem. Masechet Yevamot, on the 61st page, on the first side says, it talks about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, of how he would go by the, by the cemetery, and they told him, oh, no, 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 don't pass by the cemetery. Over there, there's, uh, you know, there's the graves of uh, Gentiles. So what does he say? He says, He says, you don't have to worry about the, 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 the grave sites of the Gentiles. Doesn't make, uh, doesn't turn you impure. Doesn't make you tameh, like the way it would be in a Jewish cemetery. And where does he draw that from? From a pasuk from Yecheskel that says, Vaten tsoni tson mariti adamatem. There's a pasuk in Yechezkel in the Prophet that says, "You are my flock." Adam atem, the Jewish people, you're my flock, and you're also called Adam. Here's the chidush. We just learned that Adam is the name of Adam. That's the name of the first human in, on, on earth. The Prophet comes and tells us, "Yes." But also, when you see the word Adam, it also pertains to the Jewish people. Because the Jewish people are called Adam. As it says, and it continues to say in the Gemara, Atem kiruin Adam, ve'en ha'ovdei kochavim kiruin Adam. It says, you are considered Adam, the idol worshippers, they're not considered Adam. The book Tomer Devora details what is the role of Adam. And now we know the definition of Adam is the Jew. And if you want to get into a deeper understanding of Adam, you know, from the first man, but all, all, all of mankind came from them, and how could it be? We're all Adam. Go a little bit deeper into Tanya. Go a little bit deeper. Come to me on this side. I'll give you like a 15-minute lesson. You understand how we're called Adam, and everybody else is different. But I, I can't go off on that, on that tangent right now. But let's continue on the learning that Atem kiruin adam ven of the kohavim kiruin adam, as it says in Masechet Yevamot. Tomer Dovera says, when you get this title of Adam, which is the Jewish person that's called Adam, what's his role? Ha Adam raui shi dame shi dame lekono. If you are in the status of Adam, if you're a Jew, it is appropriate that you emulate your Creator. Meaning, what is your role? Your role is to emulate God. God created the world, and today we have 9 billion people. There's 14 million people that their job, their role, the reason that they were chosen as a nation is to emulate God in this world. That's what we got hired for. Adam Raush Damel Kono. It is fitting for a man to resemble his creator. That's his duty, and that's what he's supposed to do. So if you were lost up until tonight, and you don't know what you need to do, and you feel like you need to go find yourself in Europe and go backpacking, I just saved you a whole like $10,000 trip. Your whole purpose in this world as a Jew is to emulate God. You've been found. You already know what to do tomorrow morning when you wake up. Emulate God. And the primary resemblance of the divine form and likeness is through one's deeds. Meaning, how do you emulate God? Through action. The way you act. The way you act in the way of God, that is your role over here. That is your purpose. The role of Adam is to emulate God in this world, emulate God's attributes in human form. That was the original plan. 
But it took some time before that reality came to fruition. In other words, when God created Adam, that was the original plan. That there'll be a human being that emulates the way of God in this world. And on day one, when Hashem pressed play on the world and things started to roll, the whole thing fell apart. Why? Because right after Hashem created Adam, he sinned and got kicked out of Gan Eden. And the journey for man to emulate God in this world began. And if you know the whole story of Bereshit, I'll give you a, a 30 second uh, uh, recap, recap of, of what happened to man, to Adam, that was supposed to emulate God. We had 10 generations from Adam to Noah. And it was a total deterioration of mankind. Meaning, from Adam Arishon, it all went downhill. There's no emulating God. It's just downhill from there. We know that there was Dor Enosh, which is the, when idol worship began. And there's a famous pasuk, Vayar Hashem ki rabba ra'at ha'adam ba'aretz, v'chol yetzer machshivot libo ra, rak ra kol hayom. That we got to the point that what? That Hashem saw that, Hashem, that, 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 that mankind deteriorated, that machshavot libo, the only thing that's on his mind, rak ra kol hayom. Only bad all day. 24-7, seven days a week, 365, bad, bad, bad. That's not emulating God. That's the complete opposite. So Hashem presses the reset button. He says, you know, uh, that was uh, beta, right? <laughs> Version 2. Let's, let's try again. So, HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought the flood, right? Noah, and the generation of the flood. And he pressed reset on the world. And it started over with Noah and his family. And just when it started with Noah, he said, Oh, here's Noah, Ish Tzaddik. He has his family. Let's uh, repopulate the world. You know, we got rid of all the bad, of all the evil. Again, things deteriorated once again. And over there we had generation of disbursement, the Tower of Babylon, that they actually built a tower wanting to fight God. And then came a man. Ten generations after Noah, his name was Avraham, who was the first person to seek out God. He was the first person to believe in God. He was the first person to introduce God's ways to the world. And he was the first one to promote Manu atheism to the people. And as a matter of fact, the Midrash Rabbah states, in Sefer Bereshit it says, It says over there, that the, you know, as it recounts the, the cre God's creation, and it was going to give the names of all the, the offsprings of Adam and his family, comes uh, Midrash Rabbah and it says over there, the word Behibare'am, strange. What is Behibare'am? It doesn't sound right. It says Behibare'am, boggle the letters. It's actually spelling Be'avraham. <laughs> that Hashem created the entire world in order for there to be one individual like Avraham in the world. Someone who emulates his ways. Who was the first one? Who was the first one to begin to emulate God's ways? Abraham Avinu. So the, and so begins the process, the journey, to manifest in this world the chosen nation, God's child, the worthy of receiving the word of God, worthy of receiving the Torah. And to continue the lineage so you can know where you came from and how we got here. Abraham had two children. He had Yitzhak and Ishmael. Ishmael is the psolet, Yitzhak is the Ikar. Then we have Ikar, Yitzhak. Yitzhak had Yaakov and Esav. Esav is the psolet, and Yaakov is the Ikar. Now we have Yaakov. Yaakov has 12 children, perfect children. Am Yisrael is born. And it took us, as it says, 26 generations after creation, in the year of 2448, after Abraham had Yitzhak, and Yitzhak had Yaakov, and Yaakov had the 12 tribes, and 26 generations after creation, from Adam Arishon up until the year 2448, the descendants of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov 
receive the Holy Torah in Har Sinai. Shavuot. Masechet Shabbat on the 88th page says, the angels talking to God, Amru lo, Chemda genuza yesh lecha, Shegnuza kodem, Sheshet yeme bereshit, Tatkaad dorot. The angels telling Akadosh Baruch Hu, you have this beautiful treasure that you've been keeping in the, in, in the heavens for 974 generations. And now you want to give it to the Jewish people? Because at the end of the day, we're men. We, we sin. We're, we make mistakes. Angels are perfect. The angels are trying to leave it up in the Shammai. The Torah is for us. It's for, the Torah is holy. The Torah is perfect. We're perfect. It belongs to us. You're saving it for 974 generations. Now you're going to give it to the Jewish people? Rashi says, He says, but if the Torah doesn't come into this world, the world cannot exist without Torah. Because let's go back. What did we say 10 minutes ago? How did Hashem create the world? He looked in the Torah. And the Torah and the Kudush HaBeyucha, Israel, the Torah, Chadu. And we see that alma. So there's no way that this world can exist without Torah. As since the world cannot exist without Torah, and Hashem says, I have to give it to the Jewish people, they're finally primed. So let me ask you a question. If the world can't exist without Torah, then how did it exist for 2,448 years? If, it's, if there's no reality that this world can be without Torah, then how did the world survive without the Torah for 2,448 years? The answer is, Ki le'olam hasdo. God's loving kindness and patience for us, the chosen people, to emerge is how the world survived for 2,448 years. He was waiting for Abraham to have Yitzchak, Yitzchak to have Yaakov, Yaakov to have the children, after 10 generations of evildoers, after 10 generations of more evildoers, to come to the point where he says, now, now my children are worthy of receiving the Torah on Har Sinai. And that glorious day that he came to present the Torah to his children, Rami Sael and Vav Sivan and Har Sinai, all this is hinted to in a Perik in Tehilim, Perik Kuf Lamed Vav, the 136th chapter in Tehilim. You've been saying it on Shabbat, probably for your entire life, and you had no idea what's the background story to it. So... If you go to your tefillah of Shabbat, you'll notice that right before Baruch Sha'amar, we say 26 times, Ki olam chazdo. When I read it, you'll probably recognize it. Here we go. Adonai ki tov ki leolam chazdo. Remember that from Shul? Yes. Hodu lelohe Elohim ki leolam chazdo. 26 times you say it. You know why? Because Hashem kept the world alive for 26 generations. Ki leolam chazdo. This whole peric is connected to the 26 generations that God waited for, for the Jewish people to emerge and be worthy of receiving the, 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 the treasure, the, the, the best treasure that He has in the heavens called the Torah, to be given to us on Vav Sivan, to be given to us on Shavuot, that is literally just a few days away. Yeah. Now, before we even begin to understand the greatness of that day of Matan Torah, let's go back and add another lens of understanding. Rabbi Shimshin Pinkis, in his book of Chinuch, called Ohel Miriam, says,
הקדוש ברוך הוא ברא את עם ישראל בבחינת מראה לתכלית אחת ויחידה. God created the Jewish people with a, with a unique, uh, with a, with a unique uh, character trait. They have a, a unique attribute that no other human being on the planet has. Only we have it. הקדוש ברוך הוא ברא את עם ישראל מבחינת מראה לתכלית אחת ויחידה. He built us like a mirror. We reflect. כדי שדרך מראה זו השתקף השם אלוקי ישראל. He says, you know why he created us like a mirror? So we can reflect God. In other words, God is going to influence us with his ways. And our job, like a mirror, is to reflect God's ways onto the world. מה עשה הקדוש ברוך הוא? בראם כמראה ללא כל עצמיות משלהם. He built him the only actual character trait that he gave them. I don't know if I'm going to use the word character trait. But the only quality, the only... Um, Uh, uh, yeah, you could say character trait that he gave us is that we're able to reflect God's ways. On our own, we have no personality. On our own, we have no character. On our own, we have nothing. You are neutral. You are a piece of plastic. You are, there's nothing. You are, you're, you're a piece of glass. The only thing that you are is your reflection of God. God created you as a reflector. As someone to project the ways of God. In other words, God... Shows, uh, is influences on you with his ways and you are made in a way that you are in return take all of God's ways and project it onto the world. And this is our, our main character trait. We are a vessel. We receive. Right? So in, the, in a relationship there's a, there's a, there's a mashpia min kabel. There's the one that gives and there's the one that receives. The Jewish people, we have the role of receivers. Not like football receivers, but spiritual receivers. God, uh, you, you know, influences us with His uh, ab spiritual abundance. We are the proper vessel to receive it. And our job is to pass it on. And the only reason why we're con considered that type of a vessel is in order for us to receive the Word of God and to be... God's nation and to pass it on as we're supposed to be a light onto the nations. So the Jews are a mirror of God, a reflection of God's ways in this world. We're projecting Hashem through human form, through our actions in the way of the Torah. And there's a famous pasuk that's not famously, that's not commonly understood by people. It says, let's go back to Bereshit. Vayom Elokim. נעשה אדם בצלמנו כדמותנו. וירדו בדרגת הים ובעוף המים ובהמה בכל הארץ ובכל הארץ ובכל הארץ ובכל הארץ. It says, it's in, in, in Hashem said, let us make man. Now, when we say let us make man, a lot of people uh, that are not religious, or a lot of people that like to, uh, you know, schlag up the Torah, what do they say? Let us make man? Who's he talking to? Is there... God? Hashem is God, right? Are there other gods with him? Are there like... It's a joint effort? It's a joint venture? Let us make man? Who's he talking to? Not only that, if Hashem is one, then he doesn't need anybody's help. Why is he talking now to other people or to whatever is up there and saying, let us make man? Nase Adam. And also, betsalmenu kidmutenu. In our likeness, in our image. So Rashi says... He says, you know what this teaches you? The humility of God. Why? God is created very similar to what the angels look like. In case you didn't know. And they're going to be jealous when Hashem created a, a, a creation that's similar to them. So that's why he said that he took advice from them. What do you say? Should we make a man... In your likeness, in your image. Meaning, it's, it's different when you're saying, I'm going to do something, or you turn to the people. Like, even as a boss, even if you have a business, there's a way to run your business. You can tell people, clean the floor, make the sale, bring in the boxes. You probably won't have employees from Monday to Thursday. There's no question, they'll leave you. Or you can talk to your employees as if they're working with you. What do you think? Should we bring in the boxes or leave them out there? You know, you give options. Oh, no, let's bring them in. 
What do you think? Should we clean it now? Clean it later? Oh no, let's clean it now. There's a way. It's, it's respectful. That's what Hashem was doing. Hashem is over there with Amalia of angels. And He says, Nase Adam betzalmenu kidmutenu. He's just being... He's uh, respectful. He has manners with the people, with the angels that are around him. Furthermore, Nase Adam, let us make men. Even though that they had zero help, they didn't have any involvement in the creation of man. And this opens up the door to all the heretics to say, Oh, there's another God, there's many other gods. Who is he talking to? Like we just said earlier. Hashem did it purposefully in order for us to, to teach us manners, humility, and to uh, how to interact when people are around you. Now, no matter how high you are in stature in life, never discount the small guy next to you. Like who is the creator in the world. He's talking to his creations. Nevertheless, he's showing us Derech Eretz. Even though that it might open up the door for heretics to talk negatively about him, nevertheless, he still did it. So, so we said that the heretics might say, or the crit, or the Bible critics would say that there are many gods. Let us make men. But tonight we will learn an additional interpretation to it. As a matter of fact, Nase Adam, when he says, "Let us make men." We, if you recall, we learned before. Atem atem adam atem adam. He says no. When we make adam, he says, "Let us make the Jew." How are we going to make the Jew? We're going to make a Jew. There's going to be a Jew in this world. How should he be? What should be his, uh, attributes? So he says, "Let the Jews that are called Adam, nase Adam, be Adam." Meaning, the whole thing of let us make man, let us not say Adam. Let, let us make someone down there, ketsalmenu kedmutenu, which is what? I'm the creator, and they're going to emulate me below. They're going to be the co-creator. I'm the creator up above. They're co-creators down below. <coughs> Again, there's 9 billion people in this world. 14 million people in this world have the power to be a co-creator. You can be like God. You can create in this world what nine other billion people cannot. Know that you are a co-creator with God. That's how Hashem made you. <clears throat> Furthermore, this will be the nation that will produce the man that emulates God in this world. And the first example of that was Abraham and he got blessed by God. It says, And we see that the first person that was able to emulate God, to mirror God in this world, was Abraham and he got the blessing. And that's why Abraham was chosen from all the people on this planet. And it says over there, when you, uh, as a matter of fact, we think that Abraham is, was so unique. Abraham was so special because of Abraham, Hashem chose him and, get, and blessed him. You are going to get a, an unbelievable uh, upgrade right now to see how God thinks and how God, in God's ways. Because even though that Akadosh Baruch Hu says, Abraham, you're amazing. You've discovered God and you're, you're emulating God in the, in the world. But you know I'm going to bless you? The only reason why God blessed Abraham is because he knew that Abraham would teach his children the ways of God. Not because he's in the ways of God, because he's in the ways of God and he's going to cheat, teach his children the way of God. You are special. You get the blessing. You get to continue. The, the Ami said is going to come out from you. From your progeny. So once again, you have to pay attention. This is your great grandfather. This is where you come from. This is, this is God interacting with your family. And he's saying that I choose your family. I choose your Saba Rabba Rabba. You know, your great, 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 great grandfather, Abraham Avinu. I chose him. Because not only is he able to emulate me in this world but he will teach his children how to emulate me in this world, and that's why I chose him. And you're from that. Do you understand that? 
That's why God chose Abraham. Let's continue. The essence of the Jew is to teach the way of God to the world. In reality, he knew that Abraham was a reflection of God's way in this world, and we pass it on to his children. So first we pass it on to our children first. But after you pass it on to your children, you're supposed to be a light onto the nations. You pass it on to the world. First your children, then be a light onto the nation. As the pursuit goes in Isaiah, to be my salvation until the end of earth, and I shall submit you as light onto the nations. As it says, V'natatiha le'or goim. Once again, what's your role? You're in this world. You're waking up tomorrow morning. What's your job? Crypto? To go shopping in the mall? To open up your business? To send that email? Yeah, you have to do parnasa. I'm not going to downplay that. But your true role, your true role is to emulate God in this world. And to teach your children to emulate God in this world. And then to go out into the world and be a perfect example of God's ways in human form. Are you living that? Is that your reality? Is that how you're going through, the, through life? Like I said, wide angle zoom tonight. We're not going to focus on what's on the screen and the, the, and, and the, and the milk I got to buy on the way home and, 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 the, and the, the, the kids that I have to dress tomorrow morning before I go to school and the Shabbat that I have to cook. Yeah, that's right here. Tonight we're going wide angle. Let's see what the bigger picture, like how did you get to that, to that micro uh, outlook? Let's go wide angle and understand who you are as a Jew. What's your purpose as a Jew? Why God chose you? When they say we're the chosen people, it's not that we're special. We're the chosen people because Hashem hired us for a job. He chose us for a role. You know, it's, you have to rebrand it. It's not that we're chosen, oh, I'm, the, I'm better than you, uh, Arab, I'm better than you, Christian. No, that's not the attitude, that's Gaibedek. Not at all. The chosen people, you were chosen for a, role, for, a role, for a role, you were hired. Hashem hired you. Are you showing up to your job? Let's continue. It says, Actually, no, let's give examples. Let's give examples. Layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of understanding. That's how you're going to walk out understanding. You can't say these concepts and just move on to the next. You can't just say concepts and move on to the next. We'll have to embed it into our brain. We have to etch it into our, into our, into our psyche to understand what it is is our essence. And only example after example, example after example, you're actually going to get up and say, okay, I get it. But if we're just going to mention it once and move on from it, we're not going to get it. So, so let's give examples. We see this way of life beautifully demonstrated in Akedat Yitzchak. When Abraham is ready to sacrifice his own son to Hashem. And his son is willing to be a sacrifice as well. Imagine a father willing to shift his only son from Sarah. The one that the Jewish people are supposed to come out of. The one that Hashem says, make it to a goy gadol from this one. And he says, that one you want on the altar? You got it. I'm waking up at 5 a.m. to do it. His son, at 37 years old, says, Abba, that's what you want? That's what Hashem said? Tie me up good so I don't move. Oh, what an Abba. What a, what, a, what a son. Are you kidding me? Look at the Mesirut Nefesh. As a matter of fact, when the, when the knife was over Yitzhak's neck, an angel screams out, Avraham, Avraham, to stop him, because he was going to go through it. He was so in the zone. And why would he say, Avraham, Avraham? Say it one time. He says, because the angel saw two Avrahams. He says, I see, there's a carbon copy of you. You're willing to kill, and he's willing to die. Avraham, Avraham. You pass it on to your son. As a matter of fact, if you, you, you are, you're identical. You, are, you have mirrored God's ways. And you pass it on to your child. Remember what Hashem said, because you pass it on to your children. That's why I'm hiring you. Abraham on this 10th test says, test me. And here, I pass. And his son passed. Abraham, Abraham. I got two Abrahams. As a matter of fact, if you look in the Siddur, there's a, there's a, there's a, a Pasek in between. You see Abraham, there's a line in between. Abraham, line, Abraham. 
It's almost like a, a mirror in between them, like Abraham and a mirror in between. Like, you know, it, it shows that a carbon copy of you is made. And the journey continued. Abraham passes. He passed, to, he, he passed on to his son how to emulate the, uh, the ways of God. And they're on the journey to the chosen nation. So we said, Abraham had Ishmael. He's the psalid. That's all the negative that came out of Abraham went to Ishmael. Itzhak was the ikar. That's the good that came of, of Abraham. And continued. Itzhak also had Esav, who was the psalid. All the negative that came out of Itzhak. And Yaakov was the main, the ikar. Yaakov was all perfect, had 12 tribes, and 26 generations after creation, on the year 2448, you have a nation that is capable of emulating God in this world. As a matter of fact, because you have to understand, in order to emulate God, you're saying, how? How do I emulate God? Is there a manual? Is there a book that shows me how to emulate God? Hashem says, why? Well, it's so funny you should ask. I actually have a book that has 613 ways of how you can emulate me. And I want to give it to you. But it took a long time until I saw that you were deserving of it. <laughs> having said that, having said that, the Bnei Sashar says something beautiful in regards to this month. He says, Mazal Teomim. The, 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 the zodiac sign for this month has a, has a, um, has a, in English it's called Gemini, in Hebrew it's called Teomim. If you look at the picture, it's twins. It's the best sign. It's twins. Why? He says, Keteomim. He says, Daikun Yasuam Kodesh Bahadu. By Yom Hazeh, he says, on the day of Matan Torah, Daika, specifically on that day, what happened on that day? He said, why is Mazal Teomim? Why is um, uh, uh, Gemini the symbol for this month? He says, you know why it's a symbol of this month? You know why twins is a symbol for this yeah. month? Because on this month, on the sixth day of, of, of Sivan, they became a holy nation. They were unified with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and themselves. They, were, they had Ahdut between Jew to Jew. And they had unity between God and Jew. And they were Keteomim. They were like twins. The Jews were like twins with each other. And Amisai was like twins with God. That's why it says over there, Vayichan Shamisai. The word Vayichan is in singular form. It should, it should be Vayachanu. Vayachanu is plural. Why does it say Vayichan? Because they were Amichad Belevichad. It says, that the reason why they're the sign of this month is Teomim, is to show us that the Jews were identical in, uh, just like Avraham, Avraham. Every single Jew had what? Identical uh, attributes to be able to emulate the ways of God. And emulating the, the ways of God means that you're also twinning with God. God is his, has his, uh, his ways, and he's able to say that you are going to be in my ways, in human form below. And this is why with the Jewish people were twinning up between themselves and twinning with God. Furthermore, as we said, that the Jewish people, the Torah and God are one. This was the moment where it was actually manifested. That the Jewish people and God and the Torah were one. And this was the time where the, 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 the triangles connected. Where Hashem says, now, here is the Torah and here is the Jewish people, we are all one. Yeah. So this whole thing of how Kaddosh Baruch Hu in the beginning of time said, Kudush Baruch Hu Oraita Veisayel, Hadu! 2,440 later, it comes to fruition. You should know, as, uh, you know, like, put yourself at the bottom of that mountain. Again, 2,448 years after creation, 26 generations, 26, 20 wicked generations, took six generations from Abraham up until Matan Torah. Millions of people on the bottom of that mountain. And here's the moment that we've all been waiting for. God is going to give the Torah to the Jewish people. And all of a sudden, there's a delay. All of a sudden, there's a chance that it's not happening. Why? 
Hashem says, I don't know if I'm quite ready to give it up. You know, I've been holding it for 970, 174 generations. I'm just not sure if I'm ready to give it. This Hemda Genuzah, this, uh, this precious Torah that is, uh, that, is, that is in my treasure house before the six days of creation, the Tatka'at Dorot, I don't know if I'm ready to give it. Beautiful story coming up. It says, in Midrash Shira Shirim, it brings this, Midrash Rabbah. It says, when the Jewish people were saying in front of Har Sinai in order to receive the Torah, Kadosh Baruch Hu tells them, It's my desire to give you my Torah, my precious Torah. He says, but I need you to have bring me some co-signers. I need some collateral. So I need, to, I need to have a guarantee that when I give you this Torah, that when I give you this Torah, I want a guarantee, a guarantor, that you're going to keep it, perform it, and then I'll acquiesce. Then I'll agree to give it to you. So the Jewish people are hearing God's request, and they said, Who, who's going to co-sign for us? Who's going to be the one that guarantees that we perform the Torah? They said, said, uh, they said, Abba, maybe Abraham, maybe Yitzhak, maybe Yaakov, they'll guarantee us. Or maybe all the Nevi'im, all the prophets. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, no thank you. Those are not good guarantors. I'll pass. The Jewish people says, you know who's going who, who, to be our guarantors? Our children. We guarantee that our children will learn this Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Elu vaday arevim tovim, ubizchutam eten lachem et ha-Torah. In the merit of your children, you're going to get the Torah. So imagine, here we are, Shavuot, Vav Sivan, we're on the bottom of the mountain, we finally got to this point of Am Echad, Lev Echad, Vayich Ani Israel. All good, all good. But Hashem says, something else, something else is missing. He says, I'm going to give it to you, but I need a guarantee. And we said, we promise that our children will learn and perform and keep this Torah. Take it. And he gave it. So we have to stop here and say, are you teaching your children? Are you keeping your word? Are you keeping your part of the contract? The only reason why we are Jews is because of the Torah. The Torah makes us a Jew, not the land of Israel, by the way. When you say I'm Jewish, it's not because you were born in Israel. That just makes you, just like you could be born in China. You could be born in Timbuktu. What's the difference where you're born? What makes a Jew a Jew? The Torah made you a Jew. So Hashem says, if you're a Jew, you are obligated by contract, by law, to teach the Torah to your children. That's why I chose Abraham. That's why I gave you the Torah. You, you actually agreed to it. You have to keep your part of the deal. So as we're about to go to our uh, yearly audit, in, in a few days from now, when Hashem says Matan Torah, and He takes out, you know, He takes out the contract and He takes off all the dust, and He says, "Okay, show me your children. Let me see if they're in the ways of the Torah. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? If they're in the ways of the Torah, Hazaku Baru, you, you're connected. You know what life is about. You're living a Torah life. Congratulations. But if not, imagine standing in front of God." With a contract that's not being honored? Go to a regular court, see what they'll do to you. When you don't honor a contract. They'll shut you down. They'll close your business. They'll regulate. They'll do all these things. Jail time. You come in front of a Kadosh Baruch Hu, 20 years, 30 years straight. When they tell, show me your children, they're on Netflix. Wait, let me get them. What? Where's the Torah? Oh, we send them to school. You know, they have well, one hour on Sunday. What? There's no clause for that. What about you? Do you teach your child? Do you sit down with your child and Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Modani, Lufanecha, Bereshit, Bariyad, Ekrim, Tashem, Amitariz, you teach him Tefillah, you're doing Mishnayot, anything? Oh, no? Okay. What's it going to be like on Shavuot? You know, Shavuot, you're supposed to show up with all the Torah that you did the entire year, and you say, Hashem, thank you for all the Torah that I learned, for all the Gemarut that I finished, for the Parashat HaShavua class, for the Rosh Chodesh class that you did in Shabbat. Oh, wow, 
Yeshua, unbelievable. And Hashem says, wow, you came with a lot of Torah this year. You know what you're going to get? More Torah. Matan Torah, a gift. What's Matan? Matana, a gift. Here's the Torah for the entire next year. But if you come empty-handed, what are you going to catch? Furthermore, as it says, this would be a beautiful story if it ended at 2,448. God gave us the Torah, and the story ends there. But it doesn't. We're in 5,784, and we can begin to ask, how close am I to the Jew at the bottom of that mountain? You must compare yourself to the Jew at the bottom of the mountain. That Jew that was united with every single Jew around him, that Jew that was twinning God, that Jew that Hashem says, I've been holding this for 974 gen generations, you get it. Do you think that where you are today, you'd get that treatment? How close are you to that Jew? How close are you to that Naseh and Ishma Jew? How close are you to that Jew of, uh, in Vav Sivan of 3,338 years ago? How close are you to it? You have to ask yourself those questions. Because you have to understand, you're no different. You're no different than that Jew. You're no different than Abraham. You're no different than Moshe. You're no different than that Jew in the bottom of the mountain. You're not different than any of the Tanaic rabbis. You're not any different from, the, uh, from all the Jews through the entire history up until today. Hashem gives the Torah to every single Jew and everyone has to make it their own. Nobody's asking you to be Abraham. Nobody's asking you to be Tzach. But Hashem is asking you to be Sharon. Uh, uh, Baruch Hu is asking you to be Sarah. He is asking you to be uh, Itzik. He's asking you to be you with the Torah. Everybody has to go through that process. So are you plugged in? Are you like that Jew? Are you ready to receive the Torah? Are you unified <coughs> with every Jew? Let's start. How's your marriage going? You and your wife, things going great? You guys unified? How's it going with the kids? How's it going with the in-laws, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles? How's it going with the guys in shul? How's it going with your neighbors? How's it going with the world? Right? How's it going with you and God? How far are you from being unified? Or is your whole life filled with division in all different areas? Remember that we're God's chosen nation. When you walk out with a kippah into the street, you're, a, you're, you're marketing the Kadosh Baruch Hu. You're, you're a walking poster for God, for the Jewish children, for the Jewish people. So you have to make sure that you're on that Am Echad Lev Echad attitude, Naseh Nishma mindset. But if you're not, if you're not on that level, then we have to add another layer of understanding. Another layer of understanding of what a Jew is. It's in this week's parasha, and it's written in detail. No, I'm sorry, not this week's parasha. It's last week's parasha, Bechukotayim. Bechukotai tells you exactly what you're supposed to do. Again, if you walked in a lost Jew tonight, you won't be lost anymore. You might have read the parasha last week, or maybe you, didn't, maybe you skipped over the true meaning of the Pesukim. In parasha Bechukotai, it says, God is talking to us. God is speaking to us, just like He spoke to us in, in, in Har Sinai, just like He speaks to us every week through the parasha. But here it's mamash. It's not just telling a story. He's speaking to the Jewish people. He's speaking to you. When I read these Pesukim, understand God is talking to you right now. If you're going to go in my ways, if you're going to follow my decrees, and you observe my commandments, and you'll perform them, and you'll perform them,
והקימותי ביתי אתכם, ונתתי משכנים בתוככם, wait, 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 there's more, ולא תיגע נפשי אתכם, ואשבור מוטות עולכם והולך אתכם קומיות. I give you the short of the long of 13 פסוקים, as Shem says, go in my ways and you'll be blessed. You'll have food, you'll have the crops, you'll have the animals, you'll be fruitful, you'll, uh, you'll, your, your land will be uh, fruitful, your animals will be fruitful, you'll have children, you'll have money, you'll have health, you'll live in the land of Israel, you'll, you'll, you'll have protection, nobody will bother you, your enemies will fall to, in front of you, uh, five will kill a hundred, and a hundred will kill ten thousand, and you'll live securely on your land. If you go in my ways, you will live securely on your land. On your land. V'yashavtem lavetach ba'atzechem. I ask you, if I read this pasuk and I just open up current events, are we living this reality? Are we living v'yashavtem lavetach ba'atzechem? And that you will dwell securely in your land? No. In other words, we're not blessed. At the moment, we're not blessed. The other side of Parashat Bechukotai is the chelalot. I don't want to go down those, uh, that road, but I'll give you the short of the long. Things are not going good. There's no food. There's no security. There's no health. There's, uh, there's enemies. There's fear. Uh, we're, we're, we're kicked off the land. We're exiled. In exile, they give us a hard time. And if I just summarize all those curses into, uh, uh, in, into uh, you know, into, uh, just to capsulize it a little bit, I ask you, what reality are we living? A cursed reality or a blessed reality? It's hard to say it, I know. You don't want to say cursed. God forbid, right? But that's the Pesukim. If you go to the, uh, to the 48 curses of this parasha, it's today's newspaper. Let's call an ace and ace. We're still on our land, we came back to our land. I understand and the God, whole cuff school. I understand. I understand the cuff school. <laughs> but, let, but let's, uh, we're, we're delivering a point. I get it. But in reality, in reality, there's a blessed uh, reality in this world, and there is the other reality in this world. If we go in the ways of God, that is the reality. If we don't go in the ways of God, it's the other reality. Okay. In short, Go in the ways of Hashem, there will be a blessed reality and security in the land. Not go in the ways of Hashem, a cursed reality and the Jews in diaspora. Now, I'd like to add two more pieces to the puzzle and then tie it up in a bow. Rabbi Shimshin Pincus, if you recall, remember what he said, that we reflect our surroundings. I want to elaborate on that. He says, "Ha'evdel ben Israel la'umot." You know what's the big difference between the Jewish people and the rest of the world? Shela'umot ha'olam yesh ishiut atzmit. Every single nation has its own defining character. Lechol uma yesh et asignon shela. Every and every nation has its own type of style. He says every single nation has a unique look, a, 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 a unique way of thinking, a, a unique way of carrying, uh, you know, uh, carrying their lives, uh, carrying themselves, the way that they dress, a mentality. He says all that the Jewish people don't have. The Jewish people don't have all that. Am Yisrael and Kumo Mar'ah. The Jewish people are like a mirror. Whatever you put in front of them, that's what will be. I want to develop this. <coughs> we are all over the world. Did you ever notice that wherever the Jews go, they become like those people? Did you ever see the French Jews? How French are they? They look French. Right? They look, they look, Chinese. They look Chinese. Hundred. Because of the environment. The Fr exactly, that's the point here. You take, you take the, the Jews that went to Morocco, they're like Moroccans. You take the Jews, the ones that went to Russia, they're like Russians. Why? If I, take a, if I take a Russian and put him anywhere in the world, he doesn't look like everybody else. If I take somebody from Africa and put him anywhere in the world, he doesn't look like anywhere else. But for some reason, the Jews, and I can tell you, I have some friends from uh, South America. Wow, those Argentinians, you know? They, the Gava over there. You know, like, oh my God, what's going on over here? And then I speak to Gentile Argentinians. 
Well, that's how they are. That's their character. Then you speak to, uh, I speak to the French, <laughs> and you see them, they look Jewish, but they're acting like French. And I'll speak for myself, my parents are Moroccan, my parents are Moroccan. You know, they talk and they act and they speak and the mentality. So why is that? It's because of this. Because we're mirrors. We are a mirror. When we're in the way of God, then we emulate God. When you see us, you see God's ways. But when we're not in the way of God, we are still mirrors, so we emulate what's around us. So let's just say I'm in America, and I'm off the derech, secular. What am I going to be? I'm going to be identical, if not better, than my next door neighbor who's a Gentile. Because there's two programs here. Emulate God or mirror your surroundings. You don't have a character. You don't have something that defines you. You are a mirror. So because you are a mirror wherever you are, that's what you're going to, that's what you're going to reflect. So, having said that, when you see that, uh, uh, you know, that statistic that I don't like to repeat, that 80% are secular and 20% are religious, affiliated, Shomer Shabbat, Kashrut, we see that the secular, wherever you put them, that's what they are. You put them in America, they like football. You put them in Europe, they like soccer. You put them in... Uh, Wherever they are in the world, they become like that nation. Why? Because, and, and that's, the, that's, our, that's the danger zone for us. What's the thing that we're so scared of? Assimilation. Why? Because that's how we're made. If we're not in the way of God, we're in the danger zone. Right away, whatever is around you is the danger zone. Now, he says, Beshashi Udin Yitzah ben Aguim umitchaber elem. He says, when a Jew, very simply, when a Jew is around the Gentiles, he connects to them, he no, and he uh, reflects them, and he's no longer a holy Am Kadosh. Why? Because the only way you could be an Am Kadosh is when you're in the ways of God. So notice, who doesn't look? Who doesn't look like a... Uh, who doesn't look in the ways of their environment? The religious Jews. You notice that wherever they go, they look the same? Yeah. <laughs> when they're in the way of God, whether they're in China, whether they're in Israel, whether they're in America, they all look the same. Why? Because they're connected. They don't look like the Gentiles. Why? They look like God. They look like the ways of God. Unbelievable. This is a big mushroom yeah. cloud explosion on top of your head that you can understand that that's how you are. If you're failing as a Jew, it's because you're a mirror. And if you're not going in the ways of God, wherever you are, that's what you're going to copy. You can't help it. That's how Hashem made you. You're unique. Once you know this about yourself, you could start to play defense. You could start to understand, I'm in the danger zone every second I'm not in the way of God. Now, you can see that this explains why we're so good at, be, at assimilating. That we're, we're, we're real pros at mimicking anything that's in front of us. And not only mimic, but become better. We become the number one Jew goy in every field. If we're not in the ways of Hashem, okay, where are we? In Hollywood? Okay, we're the top in Hollywood. We're in banking, we're the best in banking. We're in real estate, we're the best in real estate. We're in jewelry, we're the best in jewelry. We're in finance, tech, wherever you, wherever you put us. I'm not saying against Parnassa, go make your money, but when there's Parnassa with no spirituality, you just become like the, the guy that's in the next cubicle next to you. Because you can't help it, whether you like it or not, you can't help it, you're a mirror. Where is your Judaism? Where is your personality? You have none. You are a carbon copy of Vito. You're a carbon copy of Carlos. The only way you can be an original, not a digital, is when you become Sharon. Moshe, David, Sarah. That's when you become original, when you become yourself. When you live life through your Jewish identity, a Jewish life with a Jewish neshama, then you discover yourself. Like I said at the beginning of the class, allow me to reintroduce you to you. Sometimes even if you take a guy, you just take off the kippah, you can't tell if he's a Gentile or a Jew. That's why the, the, some people are makbid on simanim. What's simanim? That we have the peot, yeah. that we have the beard, the beard. Mm -hmm. that we have the certain haircut, and that we have the brit milah. That there's simanim, that even if we take off the clothes, 
That's a Jew. Why? He has the yes. peot. Right. He, has the, he has the zakan. He has the brit milah. But there's some Jews, they took off the kippah. You can't tell. You can't tell. Same haircut, same jeans, same outfit, same trend. Oh, oh, everything. Why? Because you're a mirror. So know this about yourself. When I heard this, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. It makes me understand why people assimilate so quickly. Why right away it's the fashion and the haircuts and this yeah, and that. Yeah. Because there's no... It's, it's, the yeah, minute they look like that, you have to say, there's no God in this life. He's not connected. Because you're afraid. He's not connected. Okay, but Hashem... Even though we're not connected, but there's an Eshama inside, we'll fan it back, we'll come back, we pray for the Shuvah, not a problem, but, Tachles, bottom line, you look at the person, you can see he's off the death because he's reflecting a Goish lifestyle. I want to add more and more and more and more and more layers of understanding so you walk away tonight with maybe a little bit more AC if possible. Okay, you're already. That's it? No? Okay. It's 9.30. Okay. No, I'm t guys, uh, by the way, I'm going to give a disclaimer. You're more than welcome to get up and go if it's too late for you or if it's not. Uh, no, no, we are here to Because we're going to go long tonight because I'm not letting go of this lesson. This is going to be something that you have to etch and embed in your brain. Sorry. If you have to leave, you have to leave. But if you want to stay, believe me, it's a life-changing class. Yeah, go get a cookie. If you have it in the heart. Break. If you have it in the heart. I am having it in my heart. Baruch Hashem. The way how I grew up. The Jews family. work off of the lunar calendar. Gentiles work off of the solar calendar. The Gentiles are the sun. And the way they reflect on us during the exile, their influence on us dictates if we shine as Jews or in the way of the Torah. Or if we lose our identity and become completely dark because we're not reflecting our true essence and being a light onto the nations. What does this mean? Do you guys know how the moon and the sun work? The moon has no light. The only light that the moon has is a reflection from the sun. So just like the sun is the Gentiles, and just like the moon is the Jews, when the sun reflects on the, on the moon, what does it do? The moon has to reflect. Because like you said, like the mirror. So what happens when we're around the sun, when we're around the Gentiles, whether you like it or not, we're going to emulate them. Just like the sun and the moon have that relationship. That's why they have the, uh, the solar calendar, we have the lunar calendar. As a matter of fact, to yeah, crystallize... No. Rabbi, we have the two. We have the solar and the... Correct. The, 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 the Goyim, the Christians, have the moon and the sun. Very good. This is also hinted in Shira Shirim. Shlomo Melech, the smartest man to ever live, is talking about everything we just spoke about tonight. You might say Shira Shirim your entire life and you might not even understand this very point. It says, Al tir'uni shani Don't look at me that I'm dark. Don't look at me that I'm tanned. She zafatni hashamesh. The sun tanned me. I might be unrecognizable. Bene imi nicharubi. The nations of the world chased me. Samuni no terata keramim. They put me taking care of their vineyards. Karmi sheli lo natarti. In my vineyard, I didn't attend to. What is he saying over here? We said, how do, how do you get tanned? How do you get tanned? The sun yeah, has to go on you. Yeah. He says, I've been exposed to the Gentiles. Uh, yes. I'm so exposed to the Gentiles that I'm unrecognizable. <laughs> Don't think, look at me. I'm, it's still me. I'm, I'm, I know I'm unrecognizable because of the exposure that I've had to the sun. Exposure that I had to the Gentiles. You know what they did to me? They grabbed me and they made me uh, CEO of their company. They made me the, uh, the, the treasurer of that bank. And they made me, they, they put me in all the best. It's Samuni no Terate Karimim. They put me in charge of all their businesses. What happens when you take care of all the Gentiles' businesses? Karimi Shalilo Natati. My responsibilities are neglected. This is what happens 
when you go and you become around the Gentiles, you're so busy emulating them, you're so busy winning the Goyish life, that the, your vineyard is not attended. What's your vineyard? What Hashem hired you for. What Hashem told you you're going to be in this world for. To teach Torah, to emulate God, to teach your children. I'm busy, I'm working 8 hour, 18 hour days in the office. Why? Because the Yetzirah got you. The sun got you. Shlomo Melech in Shir Shirim is telling us exactly what we're learning over here. That that's the reality. That once you get into the Goyish world, it takes over and you neglect your spiritual avodah. As a matter of fact, there's also something beautiful that is very, very noga to our current situation. If you go to Perek Bet, it says, You know what this Pasuk says? It's going to blow your mind. He says, the Shualim, the foxes, got us busy. They're so busy. They're tiny. They're, 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 they're getting into like these little nooks and crevices into our, uh, in, in our vineyards. And our, our vineyard, Semadar. You know what Semadar? Uh, we can't even tend to because it's not, it's not ripe yet. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not ripe. Watch this. The word Shualim is fox. But I can take the same letters of Shualim and boggle the letters. You know what it spells out? Ishmael. What's Ishmael? The Arabs. Let's plug it in. They got a hold of us. They Ishmaelim, Ishmaelim. Ketanim mechablim. There it is. The word for terrorists in Hebrew is mechabel. Mechablim keamim. They come to our vineyards and they're terrorizing us. Uchalmenu. We're so busy fighting off the Arabs. We have no time to be spirituals. I mean, what's semadar? Semadar is something that is not ripe yet. But also if you take the word semadar and cut it in half. Samich mem dar. Then what happens? Samich mem is the evil inclination. Dar. He lives. So what happens when we don't have time to attend to our spiritual work? The Samech Mem is living in our lives. Wow. Shlomo HaMelech. I want to add an additional layer of understanding. Yes, please. Oh Hashem. Netivot Shalom. For this one, buckle up. In regards to Parashat Bechukotai that we read before, that we said that there is a blessing and a curse. This is right now going to change the way you see life. Why? Because you might think that when I do something good, my reward is a blessing. And you might think that when I do something bad, my punishment is a kelala. But it's not that at all. The beracha and the kelala, the, the blessings and the curses, are not punishment and rewards, they're a consequence. Allow me to elaborate. Netivot Shalom says, there's a Masechet Kiddushin, the 39th page on the second side says, Sar mitzvah behai alma leika. There is no such thing as a reward for mitzvot in this world. Again, we are spiritual beings on a physical journey. When we perform a mitzvah, that's a spiritual act. To get the reward of that mitzvah, we can't get it in the form of a human body in a world that's governed by space, time, and matter. The reward can only be cashed out in the upper heavens where we're not limited to this body, and it's a spiritual reward. So, mitzvah beha, alma leika. Understand that there's no reward for mitzvot in this world. All the reward for mitzvot is in the next world. Also, punishment. Punishment, there's no punishment in this world. Punishment is in that place, that hot place, right? Over there. Same thing, everything is after. So what are all these blessings in the parasha? And what are all these curses? A consequence. It's a program. It's an algorithm. It's a cause and effect. When the Jews go in the way, I'm sorry, when you are going in the ways of Hashem, there's a blessing. 
Not a reward, a blessing. When you don't go in the ways of Hashem, there's a kerala, a hardship. It's a cause and effect. It's an algorithm. It's a law of the universe. It's not a reward or a punishment. Reward and a punishment, that's there. Here, it's a blessing and a curse. Did you get that? This is huge. It's another mushroom cloud explosion. You know what's going on over here? He's about to tell us something that's going to change the way you see life. He says, Midrash Abam. He says, "In It says, "If you go in the world, in the in, in my way, bechukotai, a chok is a law, right? So we have to follow the laws of God. But Nitivot Shalom says, but there's also a law of the universe, and both of them are connected. The laws of the universe are connected to the Jews following the law of God. When the Jews follow the law of God, there's a blessing in the world. There's peace in the world." When the Jews don't follow the law of God, there's curses in the world, there's a lack of peace. The whole world is hinged on our service of Hashem. Let's go back to the first page, remember? That the whole, why did Hashem create the world? For, what, what was Bereshit? For us! This world is created for us. Wake up Jews, the world is created for us. You don't have to feel guilty. That's what the book says. God created the world for us, and because He created the world for us, He says the way you perform in this world is the way that the world is going to interact with you. It's not a punishment or reward, it's a consequence. So, when the Jews are keeping the chukot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then the world, the chokateva, will produce blessings. Uh, crops, um, rain, no war, we will settle, settle securely on the land. That is a result, a consequence of being in the way of God. The, the Jews are in the way of God, not other people. The Jews are in the way of God. And when you're not in the way of God, then what is it? The result, the consequence, the law of the universe is that things are going to be difficult. There's not going to be food. There's going to be war. There's going to be a lack of peace. The whole world is hinged on our service. So, I'm going to <coughs> ruffle some feathers now, okay? You might get uncomfortable. The world today, the Samech Mem is called Samech Mem, who mesameh et ha'adam. He blinds the person from seeing the truth. That's why it's called Samech Mem. Mesameh, he blinds. As a Jew, I turn on the news, and I feel like a victim. What do they want from us? What did we do? We're so good. Look at the people in the colleges. Look at the, look, look at the terrorism. Look at the Arab world. Everybody hates the Jews. What did we do? Nothing. Why does the world hate us? They are jealous. The answer is because we're not doing our job. <laughs> That's it. What we, that Samech Mem has is he's fooled us. We're pointing the fingers. Biden. Putin, Bibi, Arab, Hamas, this. Ladies and gentlemen, turn the finger at yourself. You're the problem. You are the problem. We are the problem. Because the way that the world works is we're like this connected. Our service of Hashem is connected to the health of the world. Our spiritual status with God is what dictates if the world is going to be in peace or in war. The whole world is screaming, we hate you, Jew. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because a bulk of the Jewish nation is not in a relationship with God. Again, that statistic, 87, let's say less. Since October 7th, maybe more people did Teshuvah, more people are connected, more people are waking up. Okay, so maybe 70%. But still, terrible statistics. 30 people in the dead, 70% off. Okay, so since 70% of, of God's children are not in the way of God, so that means 70% of the people are not having a relationship with God. They're not talking to God. They're not, they're not showing up to work. Remember, they were chosen for a role and then never showed up to work. So since they're not talking to God, Hashem has to make them hear that uh, they're not doing their job, right? So what does Hashem do? Okay, you don't want to talk to me? I'll have the whole world talk to you. We hate you Jews. We hate you Jews. Why? Because you're a Jew. But I'm a Zionist. I'm not a Zionist. I'm anti-Zionist. I'm pro-Israel. I'm pro-Palestine. We don't care. Are you a Jew? There's a joke. They say a, a, a Zionist and a, and a pro-Zionist. Uh, no. 
What's a, a uh, someone's against the Zionists? What's he called? Okay, a Zionist and anti zionist come walk into a bar to order a drink. And they say, I'm sorry, we don't serve Jews here. Yeah. In other words, what? Take any political view you want. You're a Jew. In their eyes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The whole world is screaming, Jews, you know why we're upset? Because you're not doing your job. You're supposed to be a light unto the nations. You're supposed to be the one to emulate God in this world. When you're in the way of God, the world is good. They're screaming because they say the world is in terrible shape because of you. They're not saying it like that. They're fighting with us. They're, you know, all these different things. But after today's learning, it's crystal clear that that's the problem. Nativot Shalom told us, Shekol Kiyum Abriya Tluya, Tluya Bechukya Torah. The laws of the universe are tied, intertwined, super connected to the Jews' service of the Torah. So when you see the state of the world, the health of the world, like we said, how is the world? Is it blessed or is it cursed? Parashat Bechukotai told us, it's, uh, you know, there's no peace. We're not living secure, securely in the land. What is it showing us? It's showing us that we're not keeping the word. We're not making that. We're not doing that. We're on the other side. So when this whole world, when you say, when is it going to end? The war, October 7th. Or the, or the, all the college campuses, burning synagogues, all those things, anti-Semitism. When is it going to end? When you show up to work tomorrow. When you show up to work tomorrow. When you start to do your part. Because Hashem doesn't want you to save the world. He's got people for that. Save yourself. Start. Start today with Modani. Uh, you know, uh, bless on. The, the least you can do is don't steal food from God. Say thank you for the water. Say thank you for the bread. Say, be, start to be grateful. Start to be thankful. Maybe open up Bereshit. Amazing book. Bestseller. <laughs> Maybe start to learn. Maybe come to, to some classes. Open up your horizon. Start to connect. Maybe start to have a relationship with God. Maybe show up to why God chose you and your great, great, great grandfather to be this great nation. Are you that great are you part of that great lineage? If you're not, then be real with yourself. I'm not great. I'll work on myself. It starts tomorrow. It starts today. Men but you have to be real with yourself. You have to say it. You have to crystallize it. Where am I in Judaism? Right? What like we said, wide-angle lens. With this wide-angle lens, woo, it's totally different. Nobody's thinking about cooking for Shabbat right now. <laughs> Why? Because you're seeing things with a, 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 a bigger mind right now. You're not the same person you were an hour and a half ago. You're seeing the world through a different lens. You're a mirror. Besides being a mirror, the whole laws of the universe is hinged on your service. And the minute you do something good, a little bit of life disperses a lot, a lot of darkness. You're doing a little bit of mitzvah changes the world. You know what would happen if a million Jews checked themselves in right now to yeshiva? The whole world deflates. Tss. Everything calms down. If a million Jews right now go and start to learn Torah, and look what they're, they're fighting in Israel in the court right now, not to fund uh, yeah, like a family of seven that lives on $500. They want to take that away. Okay. They, they, they still don't know. You know what? I, 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 I had an idea. I said, you know that you know, they sit there with their robes. They look like such goyim. doesn't matter. They sit there with the robes. I, I wanted to ask him the first question. Do you believe that a Torah learner has an effect on the war? Yes or no? If he says yes, okay, you have somebody to talk to. If it says no, walk out. It's not, that's it. You're, you're grinding water. If you don't believe that, if you don't understand that the, that the learning of Torah has a direct effect on our success as a nation, there's nothing to talk about. Okay, I want to wrap it up. We said, we said we're mirrors. So you know that you're either reflecting God or you're, refle or you're reflecting your Gentile surroundings. That's number one. Number two, the laws of the universe are connected to us keeping the laws of God. That's it. That's, a, a, that's the algorithm of planet Earth. And 
And whether you like it or not, whether it's politically correct or not, whether you can repeat it to your friends or not, the world was created for the Jews. That's what it says. Bereshit. Fahm Yisrael. You don't have to buy into their story. You can be unique. They're, they're trying to put equality and humanism and po- all these different things. It's not. There is someone that is chosen. There is a group of people that are different. God made that decision. We worked for it. We worked really, really hard to get there. We failed. We got up. We're still working on it. It's a, it's a, a complicated story. Why shy away from your heritage? Why do you not want to live up to your true identity? It's a beautiful heritage. It's a beautiful story. God backs you up. Once you know that, you understand that we are different. And you understand more your role in this world. And you do have a role. You have to step into your Jewish role. You can't just wake up every day, go to work, make money and say, Parnasa, 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 Parnasa. Okay. Okay, I get it. Everybody needs to pay the bills. But what are you doing as your role as a Jew? That's the number one job. Number one job, being a good Jew. Number two is the the wife, the children, the kids. They have to go that way also. They're also in the same program. But what are you doing as a Jew? The only reason why you're part of this VIP royal family is because of that. There's a condition. There's a condition to being part of this VIP club. There's rules. Are you ready to step into that role? You know the Arizal, every morning would talk to his Yetzirah. There's a, I'll read you just one of his lines. It's unbelievable. There's a, he says, he would say, Mal, yitzri. What's it to you, my evil inclination, if I do this, if I do that? It's, it's so interesting. He's talking to his evil inclination. There's about six or seven lines over here. I'll just read one. He says, What's it to you, the evil inclination, if I want to emulate God? Help me! How beautiful is that? Imagine waking up in the morning talking to your uh, evil inclination to help you. And on the day that I'm in trouble, you come and help me. Tell your enemy to come and help you. Only that result can have this conversation. But over here, I want to make a distinction on the word Adame. Adame, remember Adama? Yes. Remember Adam comes from the Adama? Because Adame means to emulate. So that is our, we are Adam. Our, our essence is to let Dame, to emulate God. And, and, and the Ariza says, what's it to you, believe your inclination? If I want to emulate God, help me. Emulate God. Go out into the world and show the world what is the ways of God. Ironically, we are instructed on Rosh Chodesh Sivan tonight and tomorrow, you should make it a point, to say the prayer of, for the children of Ashla Kadosh. This prayer, it's so interesting. Notice that there's a running theme, right? Children, children, children. What's our role? Why? Because we're in six days from now, in a few days from now, four or five days from now, we're going to the, the, the whole year is going to come full circle into that day that Hashem says, that's my boy. There is that one that I want to give the Torah to. And that's the one that I'm going to give the Torah to because he's going to teach his children the Torah. That moment is coming back. That moment is looping back. And because it's looping back, what do we say? Oh, the prayer for the children. It's the first thing that we do is we pray for the children. You see how things are starting to connect? You see that Hamatan Torah is all about us learning and teaching. Avraham Avinu is only because he was going to pass it on to his children. Do you see why on Shabbat men with kippah hold the hands of their children and they go to shul? Yeah. Why? They're living up to their role. That's what they do. And Abba wakes up on Shabbat morning. He holds the hands of his kids and he takes them to shul and he teaches them how to pray and he teaches them how to read the Torah and he teaches them Torah means what amasim tovim. That's the job. And the Jews, the Gentiles, love that. Oh, you guys look so cute in suits. Aren't, aren't you hot? It's like 90 degrees. Yeah, it's hot. But educating our children. That's what we do. They love to see us do that. They don't like us when we compete with them. They don't like it when we become their competition in business and competition in, in all the things that belong to Esav. 
They love a Jew when he's like a Jew. They love a Jew when he's a light unto the nations. Pay attention to what it says in, in the prayer of Hashla Kadosh. I want to read you one excerpt. It says that if there was no Torah learning, the world will go back to a default setting of Tov Avo. This whole world, remember what Hashem says? That the whole, the whole world cannot exist without Torah. And the only reason why it existed for 26 generations, Kir Olam Chazdo. He held up, he said, wait, 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 wait. Wait for my boys to come, wait for my kids to come, wait for my children to come so I can give them the Torah. Once the Torah is here, without Torah in this world, the world would cease to exist. It would fall apart, like the whole, the whole thing would like fall apart like the matrix. If there's no Torah learning for one minute in this world, the world goes back into that default setting of to vavo, complete chaos. There's a story of a rabbi that I think I repeated in one of our classes, but a story of a rabbi that, um, that uh, was a Rosh Hashiva, and you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of people, uh, uh, the students praying. And then comes this one kid, there was one uh, Avrech, comes to shul like 30 minutes late. And when he comes in late, the rabbi stands up for him. So they didn't understand. So after tefillah, all the students say, Rabbi, why did you uh, stand up for the, for the, the, for the guy that came, that, that came in late, a half hour to tefillah? He says, tell him to come over, tell him to come over. So he comes over, he tells him, what did you do last night around 2.30 o'clock in the morning? He says the truth, for some reason I was uh, feeling like uh, sleepless, I wasn't able to sleep, and, uh, and I had a Gemara next to me, so I brought the Gemara and I started to read it, and the small font made me tired and I went back to sleep. He says, you should know that last night, the time that you picked up the Gemara to read, nobody in the world was learning Torah, and that few minutes that you were learning the Gemara was holding the entire world on your shoulders, and that's why I stood up. The whole world was on, it, on, on the Torah learning. So it says over here, the, the reason why I'm giving you this background is because when you read the, the, the tefillah of Ashla Kadosh tomorrow, when you pray for your children, and do it slow, by the way. Don't do it like you're brushing your teeth. Take 10 minutes. Take 15 minutes. Maybe download the English version so you can understand what you're saying. Sometimes saying it in Hebrew and not understanding that loses some of the, of the flavor, right? Look what it says over here. So, you know, it, it all begins that we praise God that He created the world, and the only reason why He created the world is Bereshit. Oh, it's just what we learned today, Mishamayim. Look what it says. Why did you create the world? Bereshit, Bishvil Torah, Bishvil Israel. We just learned that. Tomorrow, when you reach Shlach Kadosh, like, oh my God, I just learned that yesterday. How beautiful. Bishvil Torah, Bishvil Israel. Why did you create the world? For the Torah, for the Jewish people. And then it says. And what did you write in the Torah? Pruvu, procreate, have children. And then what does it say after that? After you have children, what's the next thing that you do? Teach your children. And both of those things are intertwined together. Having children and teaching them are one thing. Meaning if you're going to have children, teach them as well. Don't just have children and don't teach them. They're all one. Why? You didn't create the world so you can go into Tov Avo, so you can revert back to chaos. You created the world so we can settle in the land. The only way that we can settle in the land is when we have children and teach them Torah. This line is mega. It's a mega line that crystallizes everything that we learned tonight. There's an incredible amount of, of wealth of information and brachot in this, but I just wanted to highlight one line, one line from this from the bracha of Eladim Shla Kadosh, of how it's all tied to our lesson today. Furthermore, what time is it? Eight o'clock. I don't want to take hostages, you know. It's <laughs> 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 ten. All right. Again, whoever needs to go, go. I got fifteen more minutes. Can we do fifteen? Please, more? please, yes. Please, please. Twenty. I give you twenty. Whoever needs to go, go. But please. I I understand. I don't want to. 
hold people up. Sometimes people feel uncomfortable. Like I said, it's layers and layers and layers of understanding is what's going to change your service tomorrow. And, if it, and it should do something tomorrow. Something should be different for you. You learned more about who you are as a Jew, where you came from, what's expected for you, why God chose us. And once He chose us, what He told us that we need to do. You know all this. You can no longer say, I didn't know. You can no longer say, nobody told me. You can no longer say, ah, I don't get it. It's been spoon-fed to you tonight. Exactly how the world works, how God works with the Torah and the Jews alike. I'd like to, to add that pay attention that tonight had a running theme. The running theme is that we're mirroring the God, the God in our lives. We're emulating His ways and we're meant to pass it on to our children. And this is actually evident in all the stories of the matriarchs and the patriarchs. Remember Sarah and Abraham? Yeah. Remember Akedat Yitzchak? Yes. Right? The Midrash says that the Samech Mem couldn't foil Abraham's actions. He said, Abraham was too good. He did everything right, That even though that he tried so many different things. I don't want to go into all the details, but the, the Samech Mem tried something by the river, he tried something by the bush, tried something with the knife, tried all these different things. He couldn't get him to foil the, 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 the plan or the job of shechting his son. So he says, you know what? Let me go to his wife. And the Samech Mem goes to Sarah. And he shows her, he tells her, Sarah, your son is on the altar and your husband has a knife over his neck and he's going to shecht him. Imagine a mother getting this news, especially since, um, since it's her only child. And she's old. She's old. She's 127. Okay? There's no round two on this one, right? It's the last one. It's the first and last. Grand opening, grand closing. So... It says that in that moment, Parachanishmata. That's how she passed away from the from the from the news. The Midrash says that actually she died and she died happy. Why did she die happy? Because she says, if I have a husband that is willing to shecht his own son for God, and if I have a son who is willing to stretch out his neck and get shechted for God, my job here is done. That's my husband, that's my son. My job here is done. Meaning that they, 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 the, the, the father taught the son properly. He kept his promise to God. And from this will come more people. This is the right... I'm done. I have nothing up to do. Whatever God wanted us to do as, as Abraham and Sarah, check the box twice. Did it with my husband. Did it with my son. We go to Rivka. Rivka had twins, but she didn't know she had twins. There were no sonograms back in the day, right? She just had a lot of kicks in her belly. So it says over there, So she had all like this movement in her belly. She went to the rabbi of that time. His name was Shem. And he tells her, You got two in your belly. You have one tzaddik and one rasha. Because what was the problem? When she would pass by idol uh, worship, one would kick, and when she passed by Shem's yeshiva, the other one would kick. So she was worried, she was worried. So we went to Shem, he told her, no, 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 don't worry. One is a tzaddik and one is a rasha. Ah, she, ah, she calmed down. Calm down. He just gave you the news that you're going to have a wicked son. You know what, uh, 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 Rivka, why she calmed down and why she went on with life? Because as long as she has a full tzaddik, she's good with it. As long as she has a full rasha, we can work with that. There's a program for that. But a 50-50 Jew, she couldn't tolerate. To have a Jew that's one time like this, one time like that, that she couldn't, she couldn't stand right away. With, oh, where's the rabbi? Where's the rabbi? My, my kid's confused in the belly. As a matter of fact, we have this in Eliyahu Navi. Eliyahu Navi. He's the one that's about to, supposed to announce the, the coming of Mashiach. The fa famous Sefer Melachim, what does it say over there? The whole thing when you had the standoff with the, 
uh, with the with the Jewish people that were uh, serving for for the for the Baal. It says over there, Vayigash Eliyahu el Kol Ha'am Voyomer. Eliyahu now, as a prophet, comes to the people and he tells them because you know they they they're fifty fifty. They go to shul, but the whole getchka in their pocket, you know. So they have like a fifty fifty. Vayomer. Ad matai atem poschim ashtei seifim. How long are you going to dance on both parties? How long are you going to be, really, you know, Jewish and Gentile both at the same time? Im Hashem ha'elokim, lechu acharav. If God is the, 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 the king, or he's the God, if God is God, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu is God, go after him. Vim ha'baal, but if the Baal is the God, lechu acharav. Choose a path, don't be 50-50. Full Avod Azra or full Akadosh Baruch Hu, choose a path. Velo Anu Amo Todava, I didn't answer. Meaning, there's nothing worse than a 50 50 Jew. Why? Because you take two steps forward and two steps back. You're always in the same place. Choose a side. Why do you have to choose a side? Because if you choose a side, you'll reflect that side. Now that you know that that's how you're made, use your tool properly. Otherwise, your tool is going to be to your detriment. It's going to ruin you spiritually. And you have to pay the price. After 120 years ago, up to the Shema, you got to pay the price. There's a debt. We're not here to scare people. As a matter of fact, when it comes to our children, remember Yaakov, when he went to Egypt, he wasn't so, so happy with that idea. He says, if I go to Egypt, it's on the condition. It's in the condition that what? That Yehuda goes to Goshen and makes it Goshna. He puts the hay in Goshen. He puts God in Goshen. Then he goes over there and he, and he, and he gives us, a, a, he negotiates for us a part, a, a, a part of the land that over there there's going to be the Jewish school, the Jewish supermarket, the Jewish mikveh, the, Jew, the, the, the Jewish ghetto, that we're going to be completely separated from the Egyptians. If we have that, then we move to Egypt. If we don't have that, we don't move. And that's where Yehuda went first. Why? The education of our children. Right. Children, 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 children. Protecting our children. It says in Yov, Adam la'amal yulad. That a person is born to toil. Toils to work. So there's two options here. When you're born, you could work Regular work, physical work, business work, or you could work Hashem. You could do phys spiritual work or physical work. Obviously, the, the Gemara goes back and forth and tells us the best thing is 50 50. You have to do physical work, you have to do regular work, and you also have to have the spiritual work. But Adam la'amal yulad. You have to work, one thing or the other. The Jew has to have the balance, right? What's the balance? We have to elevate the physical through the spiritual. That's, how the, 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 that's the purpose of the Jew. The whole world is living a physical experience. We are spiritual beings on a physical journey. So we have to uplift the physical through the spiritual meaning. Everybody needs to eat, right? So what do we do? We take the food and we bless on it. Then we go. We took the physical uh, uh, and, and made it spiritual. Everybody needs to make money. Us too. We make money and then we take. Masot, tzedakot. We give money. Here, we took something physical, made it spiritual. Oh, everybody needs to procreate. Yeah, everybody does it without marriage. We do it through marriage. We do it through sanctity, through kedusha, through uh, family purity. We took something physical and made it spiritual. That's our, uh, that's our essence. As a matter of fact, that's the Magen David. What's the Magen David? You have one triangle yeah. that is what? That is facing up. Meaning what? That the triangle on the bottom is the one that represents the physical. And the other triangle is upside down, meaning what is the spiritual. And they're overlapping each other, because that's why we do the physical and the spiritual together. We uplift the physical through the spiritual. There's a whole exchange between us and God through the performance of the mitzvot. As a matter of fact, it says, Adam la'amal yulad, the word yulad means to be born, but also means uh, the word le'amal, uh, al-menat lilmod velelamed. La'amal, why do we learn? Only so we can teach. As a matter of fact, also, for those of you that pray in the morning, right before Shema Yisrael, pay attention to the Kama. Sometimes you, you, you maybe don't pay attention to the Kama. Right before Shema Yisrael, when we say, 
Ten, להבין, להשכיל, לשמוע, ללמוד וללמד. So over there, if you pay attention, it says, להשכיל, כמה. לשמוע, כמה. ללמוד וללמד, together and then כמה. Meaning what? That when it comes to ללמוד, to learn, he has to be with ללמד, to teach. That's why there is no separation between the two. ללמוד על מנת ללמד. The only reason why you learn is in order to teach, teach who? The children. There's one last part, I'm going to skip it. And it has to do with... Wow, there's just too much, it's too much, it's too much. No, that's it, that's it. It says, it says over there, Lo nevosh velo nikalem velo nikashel olam ve'ed. It says for us not to be embarrassed. Stop being embarrassed to be a Jew. What's the problem? What's the problem with being Jewish? Yeah. Why do you feel like you have to be like a Gentile? Why do you feel like you have to have their haircut or their fashion or their, or, or their lingo or their speech or their attitude? Why do you have to copy them? Be you. It says, Lo nevosh velo nikalem velo nikashel olam ved. We say, Shelo nevosh velo nikalem. Bushan, klima. You know, I, I can't go too deep into it. Seriously, I really went over, over it. But one of the big problems of, uh, of the Jewish people is that we're embarrassed to be Jewish. <laughs> We like have this like this shame of putting on a kippah. You know these guys that go to shul, they put on a kippah, yes. and as soon as they come out of shul, it goes in the pocket. Yes. Well, what happened? What happened? <laughs> put on a kippah, go into the mall. What are you ashamed of? That you should that you have a fear of God? That you have the, ha, I'm, I'm part of that club. I love to do an act of kindness with my kippah. You know when there's like an old lady, I was like, can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I like to show them. Yes, I'm a Jew, I'm a nice guy. I like to help. How can I help you? I like to be pleasant in the supermarket. Hey, how are you? Have a great day. Love the weather. Yes. How you doing? <laughs> Love to show a good Jew in public. Lama lo. What are you embarrassed? So you're, so you're going to walk around with the tattoos and with the tank top and with the outfits and with the ripped jeans to be like who? Like Tony? Be Yitzhak. Be Moshe. They'll love you for it. Because they're not going to be you. They don't bring our energy to the world. They bring something else. They're just... They're just uh, supporting actors in our movie. Amen. Amen. We are different. We but are we, different. But we are the best. Baruch Hashem. But we are different. Yes. And once you understand that we're different, you have to act different and you have to step into the role of being different. And you have to internalize tonight's lesson. You are a mirror. And the whole world is depending on your service. And when you look at the entire world falling apart, don't point fingers at anybody else except for you. Because you can make a difference. You can change the world. Because we're the only ones that are tied into the laws of the universe. Nobody else. We are tied into the laws of the universe. I do shakol, I bring peace to the world. I do, we learn together, learning Torah right now, the world's a better place because of us. But if you don't, as soon as you step outside, you become just a... Uh, where am I? <coughs> Wherever you are, you're reflecting that. Shashem varech otchem. V'samech otchem. Amen. Amen. We all Amen. merit Amen. to live a real Jewish life through a real Amen. Jewish neshama and not be ashamed and not be scared right. and be brave enough to say that the problems in the world is because of us. Why? Because we're not in the ways of God. It's okay to say that. It's okay to be honest. If we're in the way of God, there'll be a different reality, a peaceful reality. And when the world is in peace, they'll know it's because of us. And when they know it's because of us, they're going to come and they say, Thank you. We love you for being a Jew. You're a light unto the nation. You're great people. Tell us more about the ways of God. But when we act like them, we got nothing to offer them. There's, a, there's, a, there's nine billion of them. They don't need another one of them. They need more of us. Amen. Amen.